in this short video I'm going to put all these transformation parameters together and look at what will happen to the base function y equal x squared when the parameters a, h and k are changed as you can see the value of k is equal to 0 so this is 0 the value of h is 0 and the value of a is 1 so if I put these values in this equation I'm going to get the, the equation y equal x squared which is the same as the base function so if I turn this one on you can see that the black graph is going to be on top of the brown one if I change the value of a if a becomes a positive number greater than 1 you can see that the graph of the base function is stretched vertically or compressed horizontally if I change the value of a to a negative number let's say negative 2.2 you can see that the graph is reflected upon the x-axis or flipped and also because a is less than negative 1 then it is stretched still stretched vertically or compressed horizontally if the value of a is a number between negative 1 and 1 you can see that because it's negative 0.7 it's flipped upon the x-axis and it's also compressed vertically or stretched horizontally if I change the a value to a number positive but less than 1 you can see that it is compressed vertically the graph of y equal x squared or stretched horizontally until it reaches 1 which is going to be stretched vertically so this is about the a value for the h value if I change a again back to 1 now this is the exactly the same as the base function if I change the h value to a positive number you can see that the graph of the base function moves to the right h unit and if I move it to the left it becomes negative so the graph of base function y equal x squared is going to move to the left again back to zero so again we get the base function and the last one is the k1 if I change it to a positive number you can see the base function moves up if I change k to a negative number you can see the base function moves down so for any quadratic equation of the form y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k the value of a determines the orientation of the quadratic if a is positive there is no reflection on the x-axis but when a is negative it's going to be reflected on the x-axis all these transformations are going to be done on the base function y equal x squared and remember it looks like this graph now <clears throat> if a is greater than 1 or less than negative 1 the graph of y equal x squared is going to be stretched vertically if a is between 1 and negative 1 is going to be compressed vertically h represents the horizontal translation if h is positive then the base function is going to be moved h unit to the right if h is negative then the base function is going to move h unit to the left and the value of k represents the vertical translation if k is positive y equal x squared the graph is going to move up k units and when it's negative is going to move down k units the coordinate of the vertex are the values h and k 
Now to plot a quadratic relation, there are a few ways of doing it. The first thing is to use a table of values. The only problem with the table of values is to picking the points. Remember a parabola looks like either this or like this. Now we need at least three points to plot a parabola. The first point obviously is the vertex. Now the problem comes picking the other two points because we need at least three points. I can pick one point, any point I want other than the vertex. Now the, let's say I pick a point here or I pick a point here. The question is that where is going to be the next point? Am I going to pick the point here on this side or on this side? If I pick a point on this side, let's say here, then I have no idea how the graph looks like on the right. Or if I pick a point here, I have no idea how the graph looks like on the left. So table of value has some limitation. The other technique that we can use for uh, plotting graphs of quadratics is, is to find the vertex obviously then the x-intercepts and y-intercepts again there is some problem with this technique is that what about if our quadratic doesn't have any x-intercept you may say how very easy if this is our coordinate system if the Qu uh, quadratic looks like this or looks like let's say this then you can see there is no x-intercept here so I cannot use x-intercept here so I'm going to be short in the number of points here so this is the second technique but that one has its own problems the third technique that I can use is called step property which probably is the easiest and the best method to use. In this technique, which I'm going to use later on for sketching graph, I'm going to start with the vertex of the quadratic, and then I'm going to use the following numbers, 1a, 3a, and 5a. Now, because I need at least three points, probably with 1a, I'm going to be done because vertex and using 1a, 1a is going to produce two points for me, I can plot the quadratic. If I want to be a little bit more precise, I can go with 3a2, so I'm going to end up with five points. Or really to be precise, I can go with 5a, which I'm going to have seven points, including the vertex, which is enough to plot the quadratic. There are cases that the graph of a quadratic is going to be given and you're supposed to find the equation of the quadratic. To do that one, we use the graph to find the coordinate of the vertex, which is going to be h and k. Now, if you remember, the vertex form of a quadratic is in the form of y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. Looking at the graph, I can find k and h. The question is, that how do you find a? To find a is very simple. Look at the graph and find a point, which is the intersection of the grid lines on the graph and then use the coordinate of that point, sub it back in this equation, and then find A. The, the trick here is to find the point which is on the intersection of the grid lines. I'm going to show you on an example later on. In this example, we are given the equation y equal negative 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 1. Let's first list the transformation which is performed on the base function y equal x squared. Because a is negative here, 
This means that the graph of the base function is reflected upon the x-axis. The other thing is that because a is negative 2 and it's less than negative 1, then it means that the graph of y equal x squared, the base function, is stretched vertically. The next one, because h is negative 1, remember, the equation is x minus h, and here we have x plus 1, so h is negative 1, then it means that the base function, the graph, is moved left one unit along the x-axis. And finally, because k is negative 1, then it means that the graph is moved down one unit. And since a is negative, negative 2, this means that the parabola is going to open downward. Knowing this information, now we are going to go ahead and plot the function. The vertex, vertex of the function is negative 1 and negative 1, which is going to be this point here. Now I'm going to use a new technique which is the step property. The step property is that you always start from the vertex. Now you are going to move along the direction which is specified by the sign of a here. a is negative 2 here. So this means because the parabola opens downward this means that the movement is always going down. So start at the vertex now go one unit to the right I'm going to end up at the y-axis then move 1a units depending on the sign because 1a is negative 2 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 so this means move one unit to the right and then two units down so I'm going to get this point now again, go back to the vertex, move one unit to the left, then 1a, which is negative 2, down, which is here. So I have two points here. Now I can connect them, you know, with a smooth curve and then find, you know, the plot the graph. Or let's use the next point, which is 3a. 3a is negative 6. So this means start from this point now, move one unit to the right which is going to be here and then six unit down so one two three four five six so I'm going to end up here now go back to this point move one unit to the left which is here and then six unit down so one two three four five six now I have five points. Now it's enough points so I can plot the graph by drawing a smooth curve. So this is going to be the graph of y equal negative 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 1. The next example says for the relationship y is equal to 2 times x minus 6 squared plus 3 identify the coordinates of the vertex the vertex is 6 and 3 remember h is 6 here and k is 3 so the coordinate of the vertex is 6 and 3 now it asks determine the coordinate of the point 2 units to the left of the vertex Vertex is at x equal to 6. 2 units to the left, x is equal to 4. And the y coordinate of that point is going to be 2 times 4 minus 6 squared plus 3, which is going to give us 11. 2 units to the right of the vertex, x is equal to to 8 because 6 plus 2 is 8 and y becomes 2 times 8 minus 6 squared plus 3 which is going to be exactly the same thing 11 
so this means this point becomes 4 and 11 and this becomes 8 and 11 now I can plot the equation y equal 2 times x minus 6 squared plus 3 using the vertex that I found before and those two points that also I found so the vertex is 6 and 3 so 6 and 3 is going to be this point again remember a is positive so the parabola opens on upward and 4 and 11 4 and 11 11 is outside so it's going to be a point somewhere around here and 8 and 11 is going to be a point somewhere around here now I can connect these together with a smooth curve and I'm going to find a problem which looks like this the same type of question we have y equal negative 0.5 times x plus 9 minus squared minus 2 we are supposed to find the coordinate of the vertex so vertex is negative 9 and negative 2 because remember x minus h so h is negative 9 and k is negative 2 now I want a point 2 units to the left of vertex so the x coordinate becomes to the left of negative 9 is going to be negative 11 so the y coordinate of that point is negative 0.5 negative 11 plus 9 squared minus 2 which becomes negative 4 because negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 5 is negative 2 times negative minus negative 2 minus 2 becomes negative 4 so this point becomes negative 11 and negative 4 the next one to the right of the vertex on so negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7 and the y coordinate becomes negative 0.5 squared minus 7 plus 9 squared minus 2 which is going to give us the same number negative 4 so the other point is negative 7 and negative 4 the reason if you notice that we are getting the same y value for those points is the following that I explained before if you have a parabola like this one if this is the axis of symmetry we are picking the points which are equidistant from the axis of symmetry this point and this point if you look at these two they are equidistant from the axis of symmetry and by the property of parabola being symmetric about the line of symmetry they have to have the same y coordinate now we are going to plot y equal negative 0.5 open bracket x plus 9 squared minus 2 using the three points vertex and these two points that we found the vertex is negative 9 and negative 2 so negative 9 and negative 2 is going to be this point the a value is negative 0.5 so the parabola opens downward and is going to be compressed vertically now the two points are negative 11 negative 4 and negative 7 negative 4 so if I want to plot it negative 11 is going to be outside the graph but negative 4 is here so it's going to be somewhere around this point and negative 7 and negative 4 is going to be negative 7 and negative 4 is going to be this point I have minimum three points available so I can just have a smooth curve going through these three points so it's going to be something like this now just again to remind you that the line that goes through the vertex which is shown here this is the vertex and the line that goes through this vertex is going to be the line of symmetry and the interesting point is that the points to the right and left 
of this line are going to be symmetric. This means that if I have a point here, then the, by the rule of this line of symmetry, the other point is going to be right here. They are going to have the same y value and the distance of these points, meaning the x values from the line of symmetry is going to be the same. The next example, we are having the graph of a quadratic function, a parabola, which is shown here. We are supposed to find the coordinates of the vertex and the values of h and k. The coordinate of the vertex, meaning the coordinate of this point, is going to be the x value is 3 and the y value is negative 7. So this means h is 3 and k is negative 7. Now, it says identify the coordinates of two other points as shown, meaning that <coughs> I have to find the coordinate of this point, which is going to be the point 1 and negative 5, and the coordinate of this point, which is going to be 5 and negative 5. Now, this wants to show you that if this is line of symmetry here, the distance here is the same as distance here. And if you look at the distance here, the distance is 1, 2 points, and the distance here is 2 points, 2. The next part of the question says, find the value of A by substituting the coordinates of the vertex and one of those two points that we found meaning one of these two points here. To do that one, I'm going to write the equation of quadratic equation in <coughs> vertex form, which is going to be y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. But in our case, h is 3 and k is negative 7. So this is a times x minus h minus 3 squared plus k minus 7. <coughs> Since this parabola contains these two points, this means that they have to satisfy the equation. So I will pick the first point, 1 and negative 5, and put it back in the equation. So it means that if y is negative 5, x is 1. This is equal to 1 minus 3 is negative 2 squared is 4, so 4a minus 7. If I move minus 7 to the left, I get 4a is negative 5 plus 7, which is 2. So a it becomes 2 over 4, which is 0.5. The next part of the question says write an equation for the parabola. So I'm going to write y is a, which is 0.5, times x minus 3 squared minus 7. 